Welcome to Commercial Kitchen Chronicles, the podcast dedicated to commercial food equipment repair industry. My name is Pat Finley. I'm a lead master certified technician at General Parts. My goal is to shine a light on what I believe to be one of the most interesting and rewarding industries a field service technician can work in. I love the work I do, and I'm glad you're here listening to this podcast. In this episode, Jason, Rich, and myself talk about fryers, electric, gas, filtration, and more. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Commercial Kitchen Chronicles. Tonight, I am joined by my co-hosts, Jason and Rich Ortega. Tonight, we're going to break down fryers. Um, I know a lot of guys work on fryers, a lot of guys don't, so I figured let's just talk about it and get it out there. The good, the bad, the greasy, we all know the drill. So what's going on, fellas? It's a week, man. It's a week. It's starting to, weather's starting to get a little bit better. A little bit. Yeah. It's definitely cooling off here, but work-wise... We can't throw a startup together to save our lives, not because of us, but customers don't apparently understand, you know, the the concept of the site is ready. You know, like you got to have things like outlets and, you know, electrical and, and, you know, crap like that to say the site is ready. Your hood should be in place. You know, if I have to start up a grill, your hood should be where it belongs and, and that kind of stuff. So it's been nice. It took me four days to do a, a Wendy's startup. They'll, they'll be happy until they get that bill. So <laughs> that's a lot of travel on round trips there that they're going to get nailed for and they don't even know it. Garland may pay for two, but they ain't paying for four. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I put very detailed notes of everything. Let them figure it out. Yeah. New construction is always rough. And then, especially if you have a GC trying to push stuff along where they shouldn't. Uh, I'm a firm believer. You know, we've had this conversation before that. Uh, once you do the site survey and you say you're ready, I want pictures. Um, and if I owned a company, if I ran a service company, if I was a manager, I wouldn't go out and send pictures. I, I ran into the same stuff today, man. Just the rationale combi install that the dealer did the site survey for and said it was ready. And the only thing he caught was the electric, uh, the water. I had no water. Uh, the drain was like 10 feet away. <laughs> it was just, you know, you know how it goes. You show up, you're like, uh, first, you're like, I can't do this. And you're like, oh, I'll make it work. Let's go. Yes, I think I must implement that pictures thing. I, I'm fairly well convinced I'm one of the first people at my my branch to implement calling people to find out if the site is even ready for a survey. Because it was normal to just show up and like, there's not even, a, not, the, the slab isn't even laid, the walls aren't even up. So I started, you know, calling and texting, hey, I got you on schedule for a site survey. Y'all ready yet? And then it's usually, oh, we're not going to be ready for at least three or four months. All right, I'll call y'all back in three or four months. So. I'm going to add pictures to that. When they say, yeah, we're ready. All right. Send me some pictures, please. I mean, it's been a week for it. Like, you know, Rich Malky made a post last week and then you made a post. And then that same day I go to that one. I'm like, Dude, <laughs> that one was great. In here. It's, it's studs. Like, no, <laughs> that, because, that one was great. That was my favorite. The guy was like, there's a blueprint in the corner. I'm like, uh, no, <laughs> that's not going to work, dude. I'll see you in a, I'll see you in a couple of months. Let me know when you got drywall up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. Jason, have you done many startups or installs? I've done startups on uh, on two brands of fryers and some uh, and some clamshells for for what you were speaking about earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, well built stuff. So, um, yeah, good stuff. I like doing those. I mean, I have I haven't made a few videos. It's it's pretty fun. It's pretty straight cut and. So don't do yeah. enough of them. It's been a while since I've had an opportunity to do them since I've become a manager. Kind of. As long as, the, as long as the site's ready, it's great. That's just the thing. You never know what you're going to get into, though. Cause yeah, I've never done a startup on a new new construction. So I've always gone in, had to be there early. There's, you know, Pull two grills. Out. Yeah, it, it's just replacing. I've never, had, I've never done a new site. I've never had to deal with those headaches. I love it when you go to, you, you know, the place you guys used to own a bunch of and all the cords are supposed to be the same, like across every single one in the United States, like the wiring. And like you pull the old girl out and you pull the new girl in, you plug the you know the interlock cord in, boom, you trip breaker. You're like, oh, come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and like, and you come to find out they've had some hackery, you know, stuff done inside the cord and everything else. This is like, man, no, I can't do this. I had a store. I know we're, I know it's priors, but I have to tell a story. I had a store. They had a, a we put in a new grill, and they still had, like, a 9501. Like, and if you unplug the 9501, the new grill lost power. I was like, hmm. I was like, 
how? And they're like, well, let's drop our new grill. And I'm like, I plugged in the old grill and the new grill came on. I'm like, no. And I unplugged the old grill and the new grill went off. I'm like, no. And uh, they're like, no, something's wrong with the grill. I'm like, no, it's not the grill. I was like, I don't know what you guys have done, but you need to call an electrician to figure it out. Here you go. <laughs> so, all right, let's get on with the fryers. Um, so I figured we just talk about fryers. I mean, nothing major. We can run through some uh, some issues we run into. Um, you know, we've been talking about startup here and install. I mean, it all starts at the beginning with startup and install. Um, gas fryers are probably the biggest issue um, as far as startup and install. Electric's pretty good as long as electric's there, plug it in, and go. I mean, you know, three phase electric's pretty uh, pretty simple on the fryer side. Uh, most time, the issues is controls, but so uh, gas. You want to make sure that you have proper gas pressure and volume. Uh, people miss that volume thing all the time. <laughs> um, you know, we go into these kitchens and they're adding new equipment, you know, and it wasn't spec for a million BTUs of gas originally. It was spec for, you know, 500,000, 600,000. You go doubling that and they want to know why their fryer shut off or why something else doesn't run or why their burners go out on the range. It's like, come on, guys. So you guys ran into that stuff? All the time. I haven't That's because I'm those common things. I'm normally doing um, fryer for fryer. I'll check the gas, but I've never come across where it's too much gas. Um, normally, it's like if it's been working this whole time and we swap one out, the issue that we're swapping it out isn't over gas. It's just because it's old and Age it's been out. rigged and you know everything's been jumped and it's just like it's this is a fire trap and it's time to swap it out and you get the next model up. Um, but really big on checking checking the gas. But I think if uh, – I'd probably find more issues if it was a new startup for sure oh, no, on yeah. a new new construction. I've seen it um, it's more probably a few years ago. It, it it seemed like the standard for a while, on especially on low end fryers, they were all like 90,000 BTU fryers. And then the manufacturers came out and they started making 120,000 BTU fryers at the same price point. So you might have four or five 90,000 BTU fryers and then they pull those out and they put four or five hundred and twenty thousand BTU fryers. And then the stove went from, you know, probably 20,000 BTUs per burner to 32,000 BTUs per burner. Basically, you know what you said, you're, you're, you know, adding 30, 40 percent more load to the line and and not accounting for that, thinking, oh, it's just a fryer. It's just a stove. Uh, it's just a grill. So, yeah, I've seen it a lot back then. I don't see it as much now, but with the accounts that we service for the most part, everything is, is a lot more controlled. I think, I mean, they spec stuff out in a lot of these bigger places. Uh, this dude, <laughs> <laughs> we don't know who that is. Uh, it, it <laughs> that name name. Anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I always joke around, you know, like we had a, it's, uh, something lobster or some restaurant like that. Not, not like the red lobster. It was like, some like seafood boil lobster place, you know, that were popping up a few years ago. And um, we had a fryer and it was the very last fryer on the end of the line. And it just always piled issues, piled issues, piled issues. And like the guy was out there was like, oh, gas pressure's fine. You know, he's my biggest offender when I ask. And so like, gas pressure's fine. I'm like, no, no, no. What's the number, dude? And I'd like, I lost my <laughs> last week, dude. I asked him for voltage at a defrost clock and he said, oh, I, I think it's 120. And I just lost it. I just started screaming <laughs> on the phone. I was like, I, I don't pay you to think. I pay you to think. <laughs> <laughs> you were crazy, dude. I lost it, dude. And I heard him hop and set the phone down. You hear him climb on the ladder. Like a second later, he's like, it's 124 volts. I, was like, <laughs> I can tell you how to wire it. But uh, so this bank of fryers was weird. So this place, they used like a walk system and they had this big t tank. It was like a four foot tank four by three and it had like all these burners under it and they just mass boiled like seafood in it. And, um, this guy would, you know, he'd go there and, Oh, you know, whatever and leave. So I sat there, I was like, no, I'm gonna figure this out. So I sat there and watched it, dude. And when they get busy and they start firing up that walk in that boiling pot thing they had, you could just like wash the gas pressure fall. The gas pressure would fall all the way down to like 0.14 inches of water column. And the fryer would just go out. I'm like, what the heck? So I started looking and the gas pressure came in on the far left. And went through all those burners, all those walk burners, and then they put a stub out on the end of that line, and they hooked up two fryers to it. <laughs> so running the gas line behind it to the fryers, they just all ran through there. So it just it sucked all the gas out of it, and just dude, it was nuts, man. It just did, did in house do that? 
No, no. Uh, I don't know who did it. because Someone when who calls himself a professional did that? Well, <laughs> when you run into some of those Asian places like that, man, who knows what installs that stuff? Dude, you get some crazy stuff. You've done a lot of in-house. Like, oh, no. No. <laughs> camera. You've done a lot of in-house stuff, like for you know, a search, you know, a few chains, but and you get outside of that and you get into some Asian restaurants, you find some wild stuff. You get the chuck in the truck. Same thing with them with them Puerto Rican and Dominican restaurants down in Florida. Everybody's brother knows how to do it, and he only charges them a six pack oh, of man. Corona. Try Miami, bro. That's oh, I know Miami's have fun worse. getting your money. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna change cameras. But yeah, it's always kind of awkward when Pat's camera goes out. Dude, I don't know why it turned off. It's been on the no, it wasn't on the charger. It died. <laughs> I'll get it figured out one of these days. You know, we've only been I've only been doing this a little over a year. For a year, yeah. <laughs> I have it figured out. Uh, let's let's change to this one. <laughs> so we oh, kick back on this one. They say quit kicking me out. <laughs> 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 thanks thanks adrian i appreciate that it goes over i'm stealing rich <laughs> uh so yeah like gas fryers man especially in weird applications you gotta check that gas pressure and you want to check it with everything on um because that's going to be the you know the running that's when you're gonna have issues is when everything's on and cooking so I try to make that a rule of thumb anytime I'm doing an install of any type of gas equipment. Fire everything up and make sure everything's running the way it needs to be and make sure you got enough pressure and enough volume and whatnot. Yeah. And well, most startup forms, you know, say static and dynamic with everything running. I mean, but we all know how startup forms go. Um, I was at a, it's people just pencil with it. I mean, be honest. I mean, I've seen guys do it. I mean, I try to do everything on there, but I mean, a lot of times guys just go out, starts a joke, turn it on, it heats up. Okay, and just fill out a bunch of crap and leave. Look, I mean, you know, you know why? Though I think if they if they change the startup forms a little bit, the startup form usually says make sure your pressure is between A and B. Mm -hmm. If they took that out and just said what's the startup pressure, you'd catch a lot of guys slipping because as long as you got you know between A and B, you, you know you divide the two of them and you're like okay. We'll put it right here. A and a half is the pressure. Or they put like amp draws exactly the same on all three legs, or voltage is exactly the same from one to two, two to three, one to three. I'm like, oh, that's never the case. I'm like, yeah. 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 And factory is just. I, I was going to say the factory enables that. Yeah, they don't check it though. It's, it's like let it go through, and it's it's a shame. So I feel a little weird. And I feel. You could like, imagine how many units they put out. You know a year and and they're going everywhere well the biggest the biggest offenders on the gas pressure issue is the cheaper the the cheaper millivolt fryers and they don't get startups so they just they do they're like a 700 dollars fryer then they call us out there and this thing this thing doesn't work this thing's you know junk and it, it you guys aren't giving it every chance to run i mean it's improper installation i get there and it's a 90 or 120 000 btu fryer and they get it on a residential half inch half inch flare so it's really like a three eighths flexible gas hose you look back there it's a yellow flexible gas hose yeah hose. I'm like, i'll see you guys later when you get a new gas hose either that or i'll sell you this 500 dollars gas hose for your 700 dollars fryer if you want yeah don't mind day. No. <laughs> we walk away dude i tell my guys if you see that yellow flex hose back there you it's not a it's not a you know the yellow you know there's commercial grade yellow one it's not yeah, that right. like rigid one but yeah if you see that you walk away dude yeah uh, yeah, when you see the, uh, I've I've walked in in some some neighborhood Walmart neighborhood supermarkets, not excuse me, mm -hmm. uh, supermarkets and uh, like bodegas, and they have the yellow, and then they have the 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 pilot light that's like sticking out this far, and you can hear it screaming when you open the door. <laughs> I'm like, you know, they're like, I don't know what's wrong with it. They go, they're going through the the the. The thermal piles keep burning. The thermal up. Pile, yeah, they're burnt up, and I'm just like, man. So let's also tell the guys. Thermal pile every three yeah. weeks. We don't know why. <laughs> don't take mm -hmm. a don't take a map gas to it to heat it up. You know. So kitchen cowboy brought up a good point. He said he's doing as much as he can, but he's not going around to turn it on the furnaces. No, I just turn on everything on the cook line. I mean, that's going to be your biggest culprit because most of the time the cook lines are regulated separate than everything else. So that's going to be your your biggest issue. So. Yeah, that's my thing. I'm only turning on the cook line exactly. Yeah. Um. 
<laughs> so you guys are talking about the pilot blowtorch. So I had a bar, and the guy was all proud. He's like, yeah, he's like, my fry pot's leaking. He said, it's a brand new fryer. I installed this thing a couple weeks ago. And he said, you know, it's leaking. He's like, he's like, I need a new fryer. He, you know, you want to send me a fryer? And I was like, well, let me check it out. Dude, I lit the pilot. I had never heard a pilot so damn loud in my life. It literally melted a hole through the fry pot. Oh, oh snap. Out. I was like, oh, how'd that happen? I don't know. It was, was, little... it, was he firing it up without oil? Because I would think as long as there's oil in there, it, it would pull that heat off the off the pot. I'm not sure what happened, dude, to be honest, but it burned a hole in it. And I was like, uh, I think it was like two and a half pounds of gas. I don't know how it was running. I was like, how did that thermopile su survive that? Most how did time, the valve survive? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it just burns out. You know, it gets too hot. It can only put out so much and it just fuses internally and it's just done for. So. So what's your what's your two favorite the uh, the uh, the F or the H when it comes to fast food? Well, I don't. I have say the H. H. I say the H, and I've okay. gotten into some arguments about changing contactors, and I'm like, H is a lot easier. I'm like, how are you swearing by having to lay on the ground and you know <laughs> if you can you know based on the type of uh, oil. Mm -hmm. oil uh, filtration system if you can actually pull that thing out of the back you got to really take it all apart you know but with the h it's just move the back or just drop the front you know those are my exactly. favorite but there's Easy some people that just terms. love 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 the other one i don't have much experience with them i've had a few i've had to do a, a couple here or there um, we're not a warranty rep in this area the other warranty rep pretty much handles them all the time and the I don't, h yeah i don't have much experience with most yeah. of mine with the f or the p um and I cut, really cut my teeth on, you know, McDonald's with the old, uh, the old F. Um, you know, you break off the wires, the high limit. You guys want to sell a new high limit, and all you got to do is put a new terminal on there and mount it back on there, and you're good to go for another year. Yeah. <laughs> the guy's like, oh, I'll just sell the new high limit. The high limit's the problem. It's the wire, you idiot. Did I ever tell you all about that that fryer? Um, it was at a McDonald's. I may have told you all this before. I don't know, but um, – I go behind a, a technician. He went and diagnosed the bad element switch, uh, the lift switch. And hmm. when I go to replace it, I take off the back panel. First of all, the back panel is dangling. I promise you, no more than two inches away from electrical. I'm like, yo, how, how did this you on a, catch is this? Is this an H? Uh, F. F. Okay. Can, can we say the name or do I do we need to keep? <laughs> I mean, it's a, yeah. it, so it was it was yeah it was an old fry master. So whatever. Um, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, so I'm like this I, week. I'm, I asked the dude I'm like yo so I take off the back panel and there's like a bunch of well probably two or three of the high limits are all jumped out completely the whole nine so I'm like I, first of all I called the dude and I'm like yo like how did you diagnose this switch because this switch isn't even bad like how did you diagnose this he's talking about I didn't hear it click when I lifted up the element from the front so whatever. Okay. But I'm like, you got two high limits jumped out, you know, this, that, and the other. So I explained to the manager, I'm like, look, I got to disable this. Um, this is a fire hazard. We'll send y'all quotes to redo the, you know, to replace the high limits and then also replace some other stuff I found, uh, whatever. And I said, but it, you know, y'all need to not mess with this um, uh, because it, it could be a danger. So we send them the quotes. I guess they approved the quotes. It took a while to get the parts. So I finally get the parts and I walk in and I walk up to the fryer and I'm like, that's not the fryer. I'm like, this is a brand new fryer. I'm like, yo, what happened to y'all's old fryer? Oh, just like you said, it caught on fire. <laughs> Dude, I followed up a guy. It was at a pick, it was a Pitco. It was at a Taco Bell, KFC, the combos, you know, some of the stores had, you know, back in the day. Yeah. And like I'm in a different market. It's like a borderline market. So sometimes I go there, sometimes they go there. And they went in there and they're like, oh, you got to change the, change the high limit on the fryer under warranty. I was like, okay. Open the cover. And he's got both the wires landed on the same screw and the fryer is just rocking and rolling. And it's running away. It's set for 350. And it's like 400 some degrees. Dude, I am. I, I took the thing off and I called my manager and I was like, I want this dude fired right now, dude. And I told my manager what was going on. My manager was like, uh, uh, I was like, no, I'm serious. I was like, you tell that dude to bring his van in. I was like, because you guys almost just bought a <laughs> Yeah, that's a pet peeve, man. Finding uh, safeties Safety tripped bad. out and across anything, man. It just it just really, really bothers me, even though, even on refrigeration RTUs and things like that. And I get where, 
you know, some of those those limit switches don't have a Schrader valve inside of them, you know, and it's like, uh, is there isn't, you know, and it's, but people just go, and it's the path of least resistance. I've had where, I've had where I've worked on a 200 series H and you know that you have to loosen up all the brackets across the, off the elements in on the split vats in the back. So you can't, unless it's the first one, you can maybe do the first and second. But if you're in the middle, you're screwed. You're loosening everything up, pulling it all forward. But you have to, there's a there's a lift limit piece that slides in there and it gets on. There's there's a little pivot point that when you lift the it slides it in and out and it it open and closes that circuit. Well, one day I opened it up and I'm looking at it because I had I had to replace an element and I'm looking at the at that switch and I see the wires jump together and I'm like, well, why would they do that? So I'm I'm like, well, they have this, and I grab it, and it slides right out. And I was just like, oh. So I literally had to undo all these. Someone just came and changed the element. But they they obviously they knew once they put it all together that, oh, shit, this doesn't slide back in. It's like, you know, it's not going to close that. So I had to, of course, I took some photos. I had to loosen them all up, get that in there. And, and it was the middle element. It was like the third one in. I was just like, man, someone did me dirty, man. I was, <laughs> I was pretty upset about that. The outside one's the middle one. <laughs> yeah, the easy one. Now, if it's if it's the fry vat and they have the double elements together, I can do those all days with my eyes closed. You know, so I had another experience years ago where a guy, uh, I was looking at his notes, and that's where you go and you read people's notes and you understand what they understand. And it's like they're like, it kept tripping the breaker. I was like, okay. So I look at the notes like, well, what do they do? Um, they changed the two contactors. And I'm just like, okay, well, what's the the 24 volt contactors have to do with the breakers? Nothing. It's a high, it's the element, yeah. you know? So I had to go and do set, do change the contactors twice. And then I found them like, all right, well, it's the elements obviously. And uh, stories. Yeah. My son had his first, uh, set of fry master elements on a, a filter quick unit um he had a couple of contacts that were buzzing um and uh he got them all back together and uh now he's got a ato error he can't figure out I can, yeah. i'm like dude you did something no i didn't do nothing he's like he tore the contacts back out i was like dude i was like either you got like insulation under a set screw or you pushed a pin out or something you know no, he, he was there for like four hours. He can't figure it out. So I got to go back and bail him out. <laughs> oh, that still that's still needs fun, to happen. <laughs> I well, love those, man. Those are some of the most memorable. When you when you spend two, three, four hours and you're just like stressing and you're taking it all apart, putting it back together, there's just like one thing you missed. And it's mm -hmm. and then somebody will come in like yourself, Pat, and be like, it was that. And it was just like, <laughs> and I do that now. And it's just like, I get a kick out of it. They're like, I've done everything. They've sent everyone. I'm like, oh, can I can I come check it out, please? <laughs> yeah. So we'll see. I like that. I like too when you when it's beating you up for like three or four hours and then uh, it just clicks out of nowhere and you're like, wait, what if I try this one thing? It's like you go from being defeated to on top of the world <laughs> in like 45 seconds. Well, Especially if no one else figures it out. You, no one finds out. You're like, mm. and nobody finds out that you was in trouble uh, yet. So I guarantee it's like because it's the fried mess of the contact box. He pulled the contact box out to change contactors. I guarantee when he put one of those Molexes back in, it just pushed a wire out. And it's not even enough you can see or tell. And I guarantee yeah. it's just not making contact. And I told him, I was like, look, unplug the fryer. And I said, take those Molexes and pull every single wire individually and see if one pops out. He says he did it. So I don't know. I guess I'm stuck going back next week and figuring it out. But it's at <laughs> And a, we'll hear about it on the show. It's at a gas station and they're foreign and they don't speak English very well. And he, they were just like standing over the top of him, dude. He's just like, right. he's never really done an electric fryer. He's just like, you know, all worst case scenarios in one place. <laughs> Man, how long has your, bun, your son been doing this? Uh, a little over a year. I think it's time to bring him on to get it. A year's, a year's worth of experience. On yeah, him. for real. Yeah. I some worked with him all day today. We installed a combi oven today. And like I pulled up in the driveway, I had to go by the shop and drop off the trailer and stuff. And then I pulled up in the driveway and he gets pulling up in his van. And I'm like, didn't I see you enough today? He came over to work out. So <laughs> I was just cracking up. But he, he's doing good, man. But I mean, we all know how it is. You gotta just get out you there. You gotta and you gotta go through those motions, man. 
I did warn him. I was like, when you change those wires, go to the element, do one terminal at a time, dude. Because I remember the first wire time I, wire. It, I turned it on. I'm like, this thing's running away. It won't stop heating. What's going on? I'm freaking out. And it's like back beating through two elements because I mislabeled them on the on the latching on the uh, latching contactor and it's just back beating all the way back through. He mm-hmm. just, I was like, you know, I was nice enough to warn him. But like, no one ever told me. I just learned the hard way. And I'm like, why am I still heating? Why do I have hand draw? <laughs> mm-hmm. so, electric fryers are no fun. Yeah, you got to know what you're. If you don't, it, man, heaven forbid, there's damage to those wires on on the on the fryer master, and you have to wire those up and know what you're doing versus just wire for wire. So, like with the Henny Penny, yeah. you know, it's just like L1, L2, L3. Even on mm-hmm. both of them, you can put them all in L1, L2, O3. You don't have to think about it, you know, but, but nothing wrong with, you know, doing the process and, and, and understanding the theory. It's just some, some are just easy and some don't make you think, you know, and, mm-hmm. you know, in my opinion, it, it's just better that way, in my opinion, you know, so. I remember yeah, the first, pass the least resistance. I remember the first <laughs> time I went to a McDonald's and I pulled the back off an electric fryer. Someone had wire nutted them all together because the Molex pu- plug, because you know they Molex together, that heavy duty Molex connector had yeah. went back and they just like cut them all out and wire nutted them together. And I wanted to cry. Oh man, <laughs> tech support will give you some sh- for that, man. Big time. <laughs> be like, nope, you got you need a Molex connector. I'm like, well, you need me. I mean, yeah, you, you can well you can buy the pens and do all that, or you can just do the elements. Yeah, yeah. they don't. Yeah. And they always ask, they're like, are those bypass or anything? You want to be truthful, but you want to get through the call. You know, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> you want, because That's when you pretend you like you didn't hear the question. Shut you, yeah. Once you tell them that, oh, yeah, somebody jumped all these. I mean, you know, it, that's not that much of an issue. It, you know, the, the power is going through. There's other stuff wrong with it. It's not what's going mm-hmm. on there. But if you tell them that, the conversation's over. You know, they'll just be like, no, well, you got it. These are the parts for that Molex. Call us back when you install it. And it's just like, okay, I guess it's down because we don't have that. No, it's, mm-hmm. I just leave that out. And they're like, is that good? I'm like, yeah. And then I find the real issue. Then I can order that Molex, but I need to get to the issue. You know, <laughs> I know issue, that's right. not the issue. <laughs> you know, I just, uh, <laughs> it's a way to kick me off the phone pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> and some of them are purists like that, but I got to get this thing up and running, you know? Mm-hmm. So and they get crusty, you know. They get under that heat. It's you know, it's just as bad as the H on the hundred series. That's why I pre-build my high limits, and then I already add like twelve inches of wire in the box. You know, put that all together, put in the box because about anything from the high limit all the way to the side where the chase is is crusty, you know. And then you get that green, um, that green, um, the copper changing color. And you try stripping it and, you know, you only get so much. You're just screwing around. Yeah. So all you got to do is have, you know, pre have your stuff put together with the line and have it long enough to make it to where the chase is where there's not that much heat and you can make a connection. But heaven forbid you try to, you know, if it broke off from it going up and down and you're going to just take it all apart and then snip it back a little bit, it's going to break off again. You know, <laughs> you got to get mm-hmm. away from the heat. And I, I mean, that was good for them to switch that 200 series to everything in the front. I haven't had a deal for the most part with yeah. any of that since they did that. And I appreciated that. So they get it, you know, they made a change. They're like, all right, this is not working. Let's do that. Then other place, other, other manufacturers, they come up with newer stuff, you know, nice screen, all this stuff's great. And yet some of the other things that you have to deal with all the time still have you struggling, you know? So <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. Uh, clogs, 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 clogs. We'll get the filtration a little bit. But... Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That's another one. Uh, so like filtration. The old McDonald's had the fry masters with the flat back plate, and the element had to spring and pop up and boing and stay in place. The old school ones, you know what I'm talking about? Before the round tube version, there was a flat plate in the back, and the element was on a spring and pop up and hold it. But what happened? Yeah. The wire was so brittle right there, it'd break off. And I've, you know, you'd see stores, priors catch on fire, you pull it back off, it's just all like smoke and all kinds of mess and stuff. And that's when I cut my teeth on as far as electric went. Um, yeah, I do not miss McDonald's electric fryers. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny because that's where most of my experience is. And then you go up north and then everyone's dealing with gas. So I would uh, be a little out of my element going up there and working on that when it comes to the, you know, the more computerized newer stuff and it still has gas. I hate it. You know, you know, um, we, we had there's a couple uh, 
supermarkets that have McDonald's in them. There's probably only one type of supermarket that does. And they always had gas no matter what. And I, that's the only time I mess with them. And half the time it was an issue with the uh, the vents on the blowers, you know, being all dirty. And it's just like, why can't anything else be wrong with this thing? So, you know, I don't like, I don't want to deal with this. Mm-hmm. Got to clean it all out. And so that's it. still a problem with those blowers, dude. So oh. before they had the problem with the relay on the board and it go yeah. back. So okay. the newer ones have a, a different relay. It's still a 12 volt DC relay, but instead of it failing, it, it, it still fails. Not as much, but it would fail the other way. It fail open. It fail closed. The old ones would fail open and pop. The new ones fail closed and just run all the time. So it's still an issue. But their new fryers are um, they actually are changing over to the same um, the same blower system that Garland has on their gas units now, where it has those little bitty uh, axial fans and their variable speed. So hmm. they modulate the fan speed for the burners. I haven't seen that. Yeah, so it's coming. They had they had that um, NAFM and they had an NRA last few years. They just have a problem with uh, boards. They change those pliers for their uh, control boards and stuff, so they haven't released it out yet. <laughs> so, old BREs. Uh, so, filtration. So that gets to be. A complete nightmare on its own. I enjoy filtration, believe it or not. Oh, I, I like think, it. I think User I enjoy error. it because nine times out of ten, I'm taking you know two three hours to clean the filter, cl- blow out the lines, clean <laughs> all the vats out. Like when I go to a filtration call and and everything is dirty, I will sit there for the whole call and you know, like I said, clean out the the pan, change the screen. I'll cycle every vat. I'll clean every vat out completely. Like I'll do everything that they should have been doing to to prevent that call. So I enjoy it. For me, I don't know about y'all, but I would say easy ninety percent of my filtration issues are a a dirty filter pan. Oh, it's user, user error. It's ninety nine percent user error. <laughs> yeah, I, I you know I do a lot of uh, the. Taco Bells, and they all have the touchscreen cry masters, and they um, you see money. They uh, they're famous for they'll put the filter pan in there. They won't put the pre screen. They won't put the catch pan. They won't put the paper in there. And they'll run it, dude. And they have a they have a little pre screen thing now, a little metal screen that screws in the end before it goes in the pickup. And it clogs up, but dude, it still gets crumbs through there. But um, those crumbs pack in those nineties in the back of that fry pot. It comes out of the back of the fry pot in the nineties. It goes into a linear actual a rotary actuator and it 90s out of it and goes into that flex return line. And those two back to back 90s, that valve will just pack full, dude. Pack full and will not let go through. And uh, the newer ones have a, a check valve on the oil return. So if it overpressurizes, it opens that check valve and dumps it out. But the old ones will just deadhead that motor and it'll just kick the overloads. So that's a telltale giveaway is, you know, feel that, uh, see that return line coming from that check valve back to the drain. Is flowing. If it is, that's your problem. You get, you know, you're clogged up somewhere. So how do, how do y'all go about cleaning out the the lines when they're plugged up? So you got to be careful with the OQS because you cannot blow positive pressure through that thing. So I did a video this week where I changed one where I showed like the guy put the flare on there and jammed it up. That thing has diaphragms in there, and it's it's a suction device. It's not a pressure device. So if you actually use nitrogen or CO two and blow through a thing, you'll blow the seals out of it as trash. It'll actually suck air and won't ever filter again. So, so you can either unhook the outgoing side of that and blow through it, or a lot of times I will just pull the uh, the uh, flex line off the uh, ninety on the back, and I'll try to blow through it right there and try to blow it into the pot. What brand is that? Is fry that Master. the one check valve? Yes, yeah, the Fry Master, the um, the touch screens, the uh, FQ. Oh, so that's only on the touch screen ones. It's all of them that have that uh, rotary actuator on return valve in the back. I'm scanning through photos because I just okay. dealt with this not too. Yeah, because I know on the older ones, I mean, I use nitrogen; it blows through. I haven't seen any issues, so yeah, as long as it's not the, OQ, the OQS is an oil quality sensor, and it's only on the stuff with the touchscreens, not all. Okay. Have. So it's an option, and only like corporate stores for Taco Bell opted for them. So if you go into a Taco Bell and you end up with corporate, look for a basket lifts and look for an OQS sensor, and more than likely it's. <laughs> Because most of the time, the other stores don't get OQS and they don't use the basket list. Right, right. So the the 
this time, uh, March 2022, I was dealing with a Henny Punny, and that had a check valve issue, and the motor was changed out. Everything was changed out. The act, the <laughs> the motor was changed out. The uh, the uh, what is the the device for changing from that to that? I have it on the, the selector valve was changed out. Everything was changed out, and it was that check valve. And and when I got to it, and they were like, everything's been changed. So I started checking everything. I'm like, this is so weird, you know. And then. I took it all apart and then found out that it was the the check valve. And I'm looking through some photos here, and uh, I had to call the tech. I was like, "Well, I I'd never dealt with that, so I mean, I get why you did all that. <laughs> so, but this is what it is. So now we know. And and it wasn't me changing; it was me just taking it apart and cleaning it. Mm -hmm. And to That's be honest, I didn't even, I didn't know it was there. I did. I, I'll be honest; I didn't even know it was there. I never had an issue with it. I just didn't know. And and after finding out what they did, and then me having to trace it all back to the fryer itself kind of like a wire diagram i got back to that i'm like well let me take this apart i'm like well shit there's a check valve in here you know and it's all stuff so i cleaned it out and it's working i'm like okay you know i'll well, tell you parts are gone i'll tell you all a crazy story i can't remember what what brand fryer it is but it was a problem with the filter system uh and it just would not return oil and we had a tech there he spent like two or three days there i think and couldn't figure it out changed the pump change the motor, change a bunch of stuff, couldn't get it. So they asked me to go with them and figure it out. And then I spent like two days there working on it. And I'm like, it's just not making sense. I'm like, it's literally like working backwards. The solenoids are supposed to open, uh, you know, like they're closing when they're supposed to open. They're opening when they're supposed to close. I'm like, this just doesn't make sense. I call tech support and I'm like, hey, this doesn't make sense. How is this supposed to work? And they run it by me and I'm like, it's not doing that. So in that, we were the third company to come out and work on that that fryer. So uh, before us, it was one company. And then the first company that worked on it, um, this lady that works in the restaurant, she's like, yeah, um, such and such company that, you know, they used to work on this. But, you know, one of the guys there, his girlfriend worked here and she got fired and the fryer hasn't worked since she got fired. Now, I'm thinking, you know, it's just some lady in the kitchen talking crap. You know, you can't believe half what people say. So when I call tech support later on and I'm and I'm like, I just tell the guy randomly, I'm like, yo, tell me the layout of the solenoid valves. I'm like, how are these solenoid valves supposed to be? Because they're they're kind of, you know, tilted differently and whatnot. And when he starts reading it off to me, I'm like, yo, I'm like, no way, bro. I'm like, because it literally sounds like you're telling me the exact opposite of what I'm seeing here. So he's like, well, I'll send you the, the breakdown of it. So he sends me the breakdown and literally somebody, which I'm guessing is probably the guy whose girlfriend got fired, took the the whole return tube and turned it backwards. So the, the thing would not return oil to the to the vets. The sabotage. Yeah, it's exactly what it was. It blew my mind. I spent like two or three days there myself. I'm like, there's no way. I'm like, this, this doesn't make any sense to me. That, that was probably the craziest thing I ever seen. So did they only have one fryer? Or you so it was one like four or five vet fryer. It was it was a big fryer, but it was just the, the they were one. all having an issue combined based on that. Yeah, because it, it since it was you know all in one, um, the return mm -hmm. fed all the all the vets. Gotcha. It was one one filter pan, one return, and then just depending which vet you open the valve for, that's where the the oil went to. Oh, gotcha. It was a mechanical like lever to open. Yeah, open exactly. And close it. Gotcha. It's like an old fry. That's funny. So Jay Beeman is a former coworker of mine. Uh, he now works for the Big W. Um, but he says, "Are you still changing those Fry Master Fry Pots out all the time? Is it still a common issue?" Um, I think I've got about all of those changed out. So what he's referring to is these uh, Taco Bell fryers. They uh, have a stainless steel fry pot, and they used a black iron plug in the front to block a port they weren't using. So if you know stainless and black iron do not expand and contract at the same time. So they started working themselves out. And they'd actually decrease and the grease would run down the front. They'd get all into the front, all into the burners, and it just it was easier to change the fry pot than to try to change burners, change insulation, and do all that mess. So I probably changed about 20 of them. I think I about got them all worked out. And I'm hoping that issue's over. <laughs> 
So Pat, when you change a fr- when you change those particular fry pots, were the new ones that you put in upgraded in a newer version that didn't have that same issue, or you just put the same one back in and, no, and I just put the same one back in and cranked a living dog crap out of that plug? And it and it was going to do it again eventually. Then no, no. If you really got on it, yeah. it didn't really do it. Um, and so, what's the difference between what the factory put in and what you put in? Well, there was a a, a bulletin that went out that. The in-house guys are supposed to check those on the PM to tighten them up too, and they weren't doing that. Oh, so I hear you guys talk about fry pot chains. I'll be honest; I've never changed a fry pot. So, if, could you guys describe for people like myself who've never done that what the process is, what's going on, what causes this, and the, and how long it takes to do it, and, and three to and six is, hours? Is it valuable? <laughs> is it worth it? <laughs> I guess if it's under warranty, it's always worth it, right? So well, most of these manufacturers give them a lifetime warranty, and that's anywhere from seven to ten years. Oh, snap. So, yeah. <laughs> it, 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 most of the times, because by the time your fryer gets to seven, ten years old, you're going to get a new fryer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you, if, dude, I've had fryers. I changed a set for Pitco last year. No, it was this year in the spring, 11 year old Pitcos. It was like $7,000 changed to fry pot, and they did it. And I told them, I was like, don't do this. Don't do this. Buy a new fryer. No, we're going to do it. Three months later, they ordered new fryers. Yeah. I was like, oh. I spent changing one fry pot 11 hours. Was that your first fry pot? It it was so much grease on it in between the seams and whatnot. Like The fryer itself was clean on the outside, but all the grease that had gotten uh, in between the seams, it was just so rock hard. I had to take basically um, a a floor jack. Put it under the under the vat, jack it up, and then stand on the on the front you know ledge of the fryer just to create enough pressure to get that that old uh, tank out. But what was crazy is um, the customer. So the tank was under warranty. The customer had to pay the labor. One of our guys went out. The customer called in seeing flames shooting out from the thing. So one of our guys went out there and he's like, "Oh yeah, it's the tank." Now, when I'm looking at the tank, I, I know what a leaking tank looks like. The grease on the leaking leaking tank looks a certain way. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking at it, and I'm like, I don't think this tank is leaking, but whatever. I mean, y'all y'all approved it. Y'all ordered it, whatever. So I go through all of that. Like I said, it took me 11 hours to do that thing. That was obviously my only call that day. Um, got it up, got it running. Like two or three days later, they're like, hey, the fryer's uh, shooting flames again. I'm like, shooting flames again? Okay. Uh, it was – it's a – uh, a what? A pitco? Is a pitco? Yeah. I so I go, I go back, and I'm like, I see it, what it's doing, and I ask the manager, I'm like, is this what it was doing when y'all called us and that other guy condemned the tank? And she's like, yeah, it's exactly what it was doing, dude. Mm-hmm. I pulled out the burners, the mesh was clogged in the burners, the gas was backfiring, and the flames were coming out the the backside of the burner. Bro. Dude condemned the tank. <laughs> for dirty burners and i still say that was partially my fault because i probably should have looked at those burners when i took them off the old tank and put them you know onto the new one but yeah that was insane but 11 hours that that blew my mind is so, that all billable yeah the, the, it, right. it, it came in like right around their their nte they gave us like over two thousand dollar nte um the customer that's for a labor. NTE for 11 11 hours so do you do them by yourself or do you go on a team we go on a team we don't do them well if they have building filtration and everything else it's two guys now if it's like a standard like you know millivolt no filtration one guy can do it but if it's building filtration we roll two guys guy in the front guy in the back and you just bang it out yeah this one was it was just like a regular um millivolt no I don't think there was any filtration. If it was, it, it was a small system on it. I can't remember, but um, it was definitely a, a one person job on some of the bigger ones. There's so much stuff that you got to take apart and whatnot that it's like, yeah, you need two people. You take a, you start taking off stuff from the back. I'll take off stuff from the front. And then when we're done, we'll lift the tank out and put the new one in. So you guys have to do this on multi multiple yep. units. Oh, yikes. I'm thinking, and I'm just wrapping my head around doing a single one. Not even thinking if there's multiple, so you I'd, go. Oh, I'd rather do a multiple than a single because a single, once you get that fry pot out, it has no rigidity and your walls are flapping. You can't get it back in there. <laughs> I'd rather have a multi man. It just sucks when it's like the middle of like a bank of two or three, or three or four. I mean, it gets a little pain in the butt, but uh, it, it's it's a it's a fun time. 
so have you guys I'm looking at this comment here by by EC to, to fix easy yeah. to fix got it easy to fix uh, discovered RTI by accidents at McDonald's when it couldn't figure it out why the old one wouldn't return to vets then I asked what the rocker switch in the door was for thus began my learning of them in 2004 so I'm used to working with RTI quite a bit that that internal system are you guys also I'm getting used to it. The McDonald's obviously all use it. Um, yeah. I didn't learn how to actually refill a, a fryer with it until probably a month and a half ago. Um, after I went through cleaning uh, some fryers that they called in for not filtering. And then the store is like literally at telling me nobody there knows how to refill the, the vats with the RTI system. So mm-hmm. I'm sitting there calling RTI. The lady at RTI is like, well, what do you mean nobody there knows? So after about five minutes of going back and forth with her, somebody who literally told me they didn't know how to do it comes up. Oh, you just press this button and this button. It'll yeah. refill. So Yellow is yeah. for refill. Red is for discard, I think. I was actually uh, about to call you on that because I know you've done so much uh, McDonald's. After I was like hanging up with the RTI lady, I'm like, I'm going to just call Jason. And then, like yeah, I said, I one of the ladies in the store is like, yeah, you just press this and this and it'll fill back up. I'm like, oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, I'm used to dealing with that in the in the there's the on the fry master, you got that orange button and whatnot. And that you I've had that break, I've had to jump that out. There, there's it's it's been a year since I've messed with all that, but it, if I had to get back in it, it'd probably all come back to me. But um I've had some instances where the store calls them, they're saying it's not them, then they we come out there and then it's like that's not us, it's them. Um, or they'll come out and say, No, it was never us, it's them. And that's the only funny thing about them is that you know. They uh, they got their own technicians, but they, they can only do so much and they only want to deal with their stuff. So if it's anything out after where they connect in the back, like everything that's theirs is one thing. But all the stuff in the back, if it's leaking, if it's loose they're you know, they'll they're quick to kick it back to us. And we've had some parts where it's like they'll send a tech like, no, it's them. They'll send the tech like, no, it's not us, but we'll send a different tech. And then they're like, nope, it's them. And then it's like, like, oh, Lord. Send the same tech. <laughs> yeah. If you if you see in the comments there, Leo, that comment that he put, and I quote the kid who normally does this cut burned and, uh, by it and is out. He was my trainee, my most recent trainee, and we was in that store together. And that's what they said. Only one person that works here knows how to do it, uh, but he got burned, so he's not here. I was like, oh, great. <laughs> Poor kid. I hope he's better now. <laughs> I forgot so, about that. That's exactly what they said. Uh, when I... And years ago, when RTI first came to the market here, like it was a nightmare. The stuff they were doing to these fryers, they were like butchering them. Like it was bad. And that's when I first learned about when they first started coming to the area. It was like 16, 17 years ago. And dude, they were just, they just like interrupt anywhere in that return line and like put their stuff in there. And you had to flip a switch and you couldn't open it. This is it it just crazy how they used to be. And now the fryers are so like they know they're going to use RTI. So everything's like built into them now. Like, mm-hmm. It's just hookups on there, and it's just it's good to go, and it's, it's amazing the difference you know fifteen years made for that system, and now it's not bad. I mean, the worst thing is is they'll say, oh, you know, it won't it won't dispose, and RTI just blames you. I'm like, dude, I can filter it and everything else. I can see that valve opening and closing. You got a clog somewhere, you know? Call RTI. Yeah. Well, RTI came out said it's you guys. I'm like, of course they do. <laughs> it just bought it. I swear, people kick the. I mean, on both sides, we kick oh, the yeah, cannon, oh, yeah. and it's just like. The customer just wants their stuff up and going and it, it's at the end of the day you know I, I when i was first dealing with them there were some times where i thought it was them and it was more to do with i just didn't know what i was doing because i was so new mm-hmm. uh, but over time it's just like man you gotta phone a friend and talk to somebody and just go through the motions but i, I found some weird stuff I, because they you know because the wiring that comes down with the you know the fresh and return uh hoses have that the the communication wire and then sometimes I found where they roll that thing back and forth. It runs it over. It mashes it up. It doesn't work. So that wire goes around the back, and then it goes up to the box. You know, one goes into the box where you we have the little rocker switch joint. That's an easy one if it's um, per se. What is it? Uh, you know, fry uh, henny penny. But the fry masters they go into those those boxes. You know, and then you got to deal with uh, where they are and and the one, two, three, and all that. And those. You know, that's always a pain. And then you got to, those jump from VAT to VAT to VAT. They jump from controller to controller to controller. And it's, uh, I prefer to deal with the H. And I guess that's another reason why I prefer to deal with the H because you don't have to deal with that too. I mean, 
uh, the touch screen systems for for the Five Master eliminates so much of that weird stuff you had to do when you had that little box down there. Yeah. Made- so they don't have the box down there no more. Yeah, their touch screen, all that's gone, dude. It's, oh, it's, that's nice. You can do everything from a touch screen. It, it's so much better. The, the newer love, the J love, they call them. But yeah, the touch screen ones are just they're ten times easier to work on than that because that was that little interface dude that thing drove me nuts, man. Because you had to like, select which one, then you had to select if you're opening, closing a drain, opening, closing a return, activating a pump. It's just like this is so stupid. It was cool when it first came out, but then after a while, you're like, this is a pain in the butt. I don't know how many versions of the software I have in, in a little cellophane pack that they come in. It's just like <laughs> I got like five years of different versions. Every time you change that out, you got to re-upload all the stuff to it. Um, so I guess I mean that's it's not as bad as the, the new one with the digital screen. I you know you just pop that in there and you know get the newest one. They give you the website, you download it, and you should be good to go. Yeah. You hope they have it connected to the Wi-Fi, then you don't have to worry about software. It just doesn't I haven't had to deal with. I haven't come across one that has Wi-Fi. It's all you got to get the based on the serial number. And I dealt with one recently that was purchased from a road show that was a display unit. So it it, it, it was not easy to get the 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 correct um, software for it. And you know, a lot of emails back and forth. Well, this is where we got it based on this serial number. And then the serial number on the door didn't match the serial number on the bar across when you take the doors off the serial numbers was different inside. I'm like, oh man, here's wow. everything. Here's everything. Just send me what you got. I had a customer that uh, I showed up. I was working on some other stuff. He's like, hey, I got these new fryers. I'm like, oh you got fry master test screens? I'm like, man, you're a baller. Was that a real <laughs> hospital? You know, I was joking with the dude. He's like He's like, man, it's the only fryers that get with build infiltration fast. And I was like, okay. He's like, but he's like, it's dumping oil all over the ground every time we filter. <laughs> <laughs> I'll figure it out, dude. You know, I looked at him like, what's this? I got GP tags on. I was like, have we been out here and worked on it? He goes, no, they were on there when I bought it. So I Googled the tag and it came from a dealer. And then I looked and I was like, what's well, got Taco Bell model numbers? I was like, but there's no Taco Bell software. I was like, I converted this from Taco Bell to general market for this dealer to use for shows. And the dealer turned around and sold it to this customer of mine. But mm, uh, come to find out, circle, didn't it? Yeah. Come to find out that uh, the dealer had it hooked up to bulk disposal and they sold to him and they just unthreaded the hose off the back and left that fitting open. So every time they, they filled it, it was just shooting oil straight off the back. Hot oil. Damn. <laughs> that's dirty, <laughs> bro. They didn't put a cap. That's <laughs> dirty, bro. <laughs> So yeah, so those be- those filtration pans. I mean, let me tell you about what I've seen over the years. So you normally have, I think, two or three O rings on the uh, male fitting of that. And I've seen over the years, I've seen, um, gloves. Uh, I've seen gloves. I've seen Saran wrap wrapped around there. I've even seen some bags, um, some uh, salad bags, to go bags wrapped around there. I've seen everything around there to to complete the suction so that thing will work you know and i got to the point where you know those little ring o-rings are normally red or, or orange you know and I, i've there's two sizes and i i i would order quite a bit and i would just change them out you know and they're not they're cheap but i would find them completely flat cracked and gone or gone and i'm i'll, I'll see a whole history of people dealing with this and yet i will continue i will never see anyone change the o-ring and then I'll see um, saran wrap wrapped around there. And it's just like, and then I would ask the staff, I'm like, did you do this to get this to work? And they're, liter- they're literally like, no, technician did it. I'm like, <laughs> like really? <laughs> oh, wow. I'm like looking through the notes. I'm like, i got to make a quick phone call here. Who's been here? Who's been here? Who's been here? Who worked on filter? Oh, it was this guy. Yeah, That's usually when I send out an email. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a talk. Uh... <laughs> Everybody has that look on their face when Rich sends that email. I think they just hit delete. <laughs> they don't give a crap. I don't care though. I feel better. <laughs> so, so on the newer the newer H's, the 200 series, something that I've noticed a lot is a lot of high limit calls, and it has a lot to do with it not being boiled out. And I, I remind me in a few minutes here about talking about boiling out. Um, so when I if I see these things touching the element, the the high the high limit probe touching the element, it's encased in carbon. One, I, I try to educate the, the the end user about you know taking a little knife or a little flathead screwdriver and cleaning that up. As long as that tip is exposed and it's silver, 
you know, it shouldn't do that. You know, yeah. I've had, and, and I'll say I've done this and it might be frowned on, but I've got this information from a, um, the, from the tech support, you know, to take that little wedge something between the element and the end of that tip and just bend it out slightly. So there's a little bit of gap and keep it clean. So I've gone where I'll look at the history and it's like, man, this thing every month or so because of the carbon and they're not cleaning. And I get that. That's the end user's issue. High limit. And they reset it and they leave. They reset it and they leave. I'm like, clean this tip, bend it out slightly, you know, not, not a 90, but just bend it out slightly. You keep that clean. And then I show the in-house guy, keep this whole thing clean, but definitely keep that tip clean. No more high limit calls. And it's, mm -hmm. and it, it's, a, it's a really bad habit, you know, with, with, people coming in and just resetting high limits, no matter the brand. It really, that's a pet peeve of mine. People coming in and not trying to diagnose or dig, dig into what's going on. It's not always something mechanical. It could literally be an end user issue and you just need to educate them. Right. Um, and, uh, but have you guys seen that? What I'm talking about? Yeah, I've seen, I've seen a lot of that. And and you, I'm glad you brought it up because it was something that, that I wanted to bring up, but I, I totally forgot about. Um, but yeah, with the high limits in general, you always need to, when you reset it, in my opinion, you need to actually watch the unit and see what's going on because most of the time the high limit went off for, for a reason. You know, you might yeah. have a sticking contact or you might have a bad valve. Like you said, it might be carbon buildup. You know, I mean, I've seen, especially lately, um, so much, you know, uh, debris compacted between like burner tubes and it's, encasing the the thermostat probe but it's not encasing the high limit probe so of course the thermostat's not sensing temperature so the oil is getting you know god knows how hot and that that high limit is uh kicking out now my question is if if you see a fry you go to a call like i just described which is dirty as crap will y'all clean out the the tank because like i personally done complete boil outs and everything and i'm like it's not gonna trip when i leave because of me you know what I mean? If I got to stand here for an hour boiling it out and rinsing it and stuff, yeah, I'm perfectly fine with that. Mm -hmm. Y'all do that or are y'all the type that'll be like, hey, I need to clean this and, and then, you know, run out the door? I'll clean. Well, it, it, it depends on what chemical they have. I don't have the boil out chemicals, you know, and right. from one brand to the next, one one franchise to the next, franchise brand to the next, they have different policies and what they have. And, you know, when I worked, I worked at a chicken place back in the day before I became a technician and they, they would boil out every three drops practically, you know, and it, it was crazy. Um, you know what? I'm misspeaking. They would filter and drop every three drops where, where, where we normally work, they'll go all day before they even filter that thing. And they got settlement all the way up there. But uh, when it comes to cleaning, you know, I, I'll, I'll clean, I'll do a clean the best I can, but I've never sat there and done a boil out. They will never let me do that. You know, um, you, know, you guys get an opportunity to do one boil out after other during a normal shift. That's pretty cool if they let you do that. So you're saying your, your company won't let you, or the customer won't. The customer won't let me. Okay. They ain't really? so by the time by the time I'm doing it, it's usually you know managers that don't give a crap. So they're like, yeah. "Hey, better you clean it than me." I'm like, "It don't matter to me." Well, I normally get there before lunch or something. I, I never arrive at a convenient time. That's that's me, you know. And I want to get this thing up and running the best I possibly can, and you know respectfully and <laughs> but you know there's so and so you know i've never been there to do it like early in the morning or late in the afternoon it's it's i'm always there at the most inconvenient time but it, you know it's always a teachable moment but i've you know i've asked the managers hey what chemical are you guys using to do the boil out and they're just like oh it's uh water low you know low level of water with some degreaser and we you know we put it on a cleaning cycle or we run it for a certain amount of time and i'm just like okay uh, and I still don't know what that powder is that we used at the old, my old chicken joint when I was uh, in my utes. Um, I'd love to know because I would love to recommend that. So uh, the boil out thing that kills me, you said degreaser. <laughs> That's uh, yeah. They pour that purple degreaser in there. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've seen people use um, is it fabric softener or like clothing clothes soap. I mean, I've seen guys use all kinds of stuff. I like detergent. Know. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> But the best, so the pit goes, their number one feature is the automatic boil out detection. Like when it senses it can't go above a certain temperature, it's like boil out, yes or no. I'm like, yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Have you well, seen? Well, don't mind me. Let's do this. You, you don't work on a lot of pit goes, do you, Jason? No, sir. 
So like the pit goes like they'll get like two oh six, and if it doesn't notice, it's still climbing. It stops and it says, "Do you want to boil out? Yes or no?" Because it knows it thinks there's water in there. And you hit yes. oh because if it because steam starts at two twelve, so it knows it's not going any higher. Yeah, so it's just that's pretty out. smart. And I thought those were yeah, pretty that's dumb. cool. Okay, that's yeah, pretty that's, cool. That's I like that. That's the best feature of a new pit go fryer. Nice. <laughs> So you don't have to babysit it. You just let it go. And you don't have to enter code or nothing. Oh, I like That's that. Um, what was I going to say earlier? Oh, we were talking about the boil out. So, um, so what do you guys have? Does your customers have a boil out chemical of choice that they like to use? Because back in the day, we used to put this powder in there, and that junk would make it clean. A little bit of water, this powder would eat everything up, and the elements would come out beautiful. You know. So I've always, over the years, I've never really reached out or communicated with anyone to find out what that okay maybe it's cascade you see i don't, is it I don't cascade <laughs> no, is it ca- it's a white so pitco makes a boil out powder it's on a little white packet a little packet yeah and pitco makes they make they sell one i don't know if they make it they probably buy it rebrand it but I'm not sure what it is, but it does a pretty good job, like you're saying. So. so so where I was working um when we moved to Washington State before I went to school was KFC and they had something in there and it made their stuff nice. And I was I always wondered why the fast food joints that are here that I'm used to, like they don't do it. And on top of that, they if they do it, it's like once a week, is what I understand. It's not like every night, you know. And it's just I just find it weird. It's not really taken care of. They don't filter every three drops and i mean is is that me because when i worked at kfc it was every three drops drop that oil the chicken looked great you know for the most part it's like at the end of the day and there's there's practically almost a fire based on the settlement that's touching the element so it's just weird you know and everyone you know you walk around and you can hear the the alarm and the computer on a lot of these fryers just saying you know for the love of god please filter me and i was like <laughs> nope no yeah, we're the, good the only the only place that I think I service that regularly filters is is the Lord's Chicken. That's what I'm saying. Right. Is that Besides the name of a that, place, the Lord's Chicken? Oh, I get what you're saying. I got you. I you got what I'm saying? <laughs> the Lord's Chicken is like the most <laughs> boiling out. They filter when it, dude. They boil one out a day. They they do not play, dude. Yeah, the fryers are clean. That that's why their chicken always looks exactly the same, no matter when you go there. They clean the crap out of those. Aside from that. <laughs> the Lord's chicken. <laughs> I had a TikTok video. I had to see if it's still up. But I went to a brand new store and I had a mouthwash thing in the bathroom. And I was like, please clean your mouth before you eat the Lord's chicken. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that in one of those Yo, two. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's a little yeah, much yeah. right there. No, no, because there there are there are those places here, and one of my favorite joints down in Sarasota, they have the little mouthwash joint. And I was like, man, that's pretty dope that they <laughs> bring your mouth for me. Dude, I love working in that place, though, because they're so nice and polite. Oh, they're beautiful. Yeah, I yeah, love them. That's what I tell people. The way they treat the customers, they, they treat the vendors. Like, if, if I'm working on the dishwasher and I, I need cardboard to put on the floor because it's wet, I'm like, hey, where can I get some cardboard from? Not only do they go get it, they lay it out for you. They like, Come and check on you. You need us to change the cardboard out for you. I'm like, I'm, I'm good, bro. I'm good. Yeah, there's this hands down. I, I love I love the people there. I love the owners. Oh, yeah. I love everybody. And you know, when I first met, you know, when I walk into some of them, because they make they 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 do a lot of money, you know. So they are oh, yeah. serious, you know. But if, you know, if you if you got a good attitude, they'll have a good attitude, they'll take care of you and whatnot. And uh, I've just always had a good experience with them, and they always insist that I uh, take something for lunch. They always get the cop salad with the uh, sometimes I feel like has it comes with the fried chicken or I'll ask for grilled and I get the the apple cider vinaigrette. Oh that's good. And it's oh the apple cider vinaigrette on the cob salad with the uh with the chicken no matter how they want to do the chicken grilled nuggets fried or if they want to take a a patty and chop it up the the um the filet chicken filet and whatnot and um uh, and then I ruin that whole healthy meal with a um, lemon frosty <laughs> So uh, if you ever want to have fun at Chick-fil-A, when they say thank you, say my pleasure back to them because that's what they do for you when you say thank you. Like they like they look at you weird, man. <laughs> that's their One line. of my coworkers does that. Whenever yeah. we're at Chick-fil-A, yes. he, he always tells them my pleasure when they say thank you. <laughs> Dude, I laugh every time. They just look at you like you're crazy. It's a full staff. Dude. They know what you're doing, dude. It's great. Uh, <laughs> no, my pleasure. Um, so I'm gonna cut this 
off. We're over. Oh, I didn't realize what time it was. Yeah, I got to go to bed. <laughs> go. But I like this talking about fryers, you know, no guests, just catching, you know, cutting up on some fryers. Some other stuff. So um, I appreciate you guys coming on. Um, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your week and you have a good weekend. And I will see you guys next week. Well, all right, Joe. If you guys would, please consider subscribing, rating, and reviewing the podcast. It really helps us grow and helps us know which direction to move in. Also, if you have any suggestions for guests, please email me at commercialkitchenchronicles at gmail.com. Or if you want to be a guest, email me. Love to have you guys on. Thanks a lot. See you next week.